Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today we are going to continue on with our exciting series of AG Odds Civil War 2. We are currently in early September of 1861. The war is going fairly well from our Confederate side. It's not going great. It's not doing poorly. Uh, there are a few things that maybe we're a little concerned about. Now, last time we swept through the map, we kind of looked at where everything is. We've got these Union troops coming down here through West Virginia. Because of that, we build up some militia. We now have Stonewall Jackson down in the Shenandoah Valley. We are going to take these troops here, these reserve troops, and we are going to put them up with Stonewall. It's going to take them 11 days to get up there. We are also going to put John B. Floyd up there. Now, let's talk about this from a, you know, tutorial types perspective. Why are we putting John B. Floyd up there? I thought you said he's a terrible general. Well, he is a bad general, uh, but he's also got a seniority of 73, and his terrible generalship comes from the fact that his ability applies if the leader is in command of the stack. Well, let's go up here and look at Mr. Thomas Stonewall Jackson. He is a seniority nine, so he will outrank Floyd when Floyd gets up here. So Jackson needs some more command points, especially as we add these things in. And then we're gonna be getting divisions here uh, in early October. And so Jackson will need a division commander. As long as Floyd is not in charge of the stack, this does not apply. So he's dispirited. Evidently, when he joins Stonewall, it bucks him up a little bit. Uh, and hopefully moving up here like this will dissuade the Union from coming down this way. Because as you can see, Winchester, which they've just taken, is contiguous with the Shenandoah Valley. They could come down here and isolate Johnston from Beauregard, and that's what we don't want. Now, we also run that risk here at Clark, um, but it's not eminent right now. The Union is besieging Leesburg. We'll deal with that when the time comes. You know, we're playing the South, so we've always, we're always juggling. We're always juggling, trying to get pieces and places where we need them to be because we're outmanned we're outgunned let's hope we're not outsmarted um now we have magruder right up here again we're not really going to talk about beauregard he's hanging out he's got a huge command penalty that could go away in early october but it's not going to now we've got a uh, fields brigade fields brigade is on the move uh, to here to Magruder. Uh, we may eventually put it up here. We have uh, Samuel, Samuel Cooper. Now you'll remember I said last episode, Cooper is the highest ranking officer in the Confederate Army. He is a seniority one. It doesn't get better than that. Um, but Cooper is always locked no matter what. He will actually retire very shortly uh, as was historical. Um, you know, Cooper was kind of an almost an honorary kind of guy, uh, a planner, a strategist. Think of how Winfield Scott was with the Union. You know, Winfield Scott was probably the highest ranking officer of the Union Army uh, to begin with, but then when they brought McClellan in, he got sort of pushed aside. He was the hero of the Mexican-American War, but he was just too old at this point. Uh, you can kind of think of Samuel Cooper the same way. We do have Robert E. Lee. We talked about that last time. He's going to be sitting here um, until either he gets activated or uh, time will activate him eventually in 1862. They just don't want you to have him too much before his historically, uh, you know, accurate, except if Richmond is completely under uh, threat. So he's not available yet. You see he's locked. Uh, we have this Richmond force with Bushrod Johnson. We kind of just let them sit here. These guys were going to run out to wherever we need them. Uh, we've now seen this Union flotilla out here. 
it doesn't have much. They're just gunboats. Luckily, they're not an invading force. It does make me kind of want to move Vendor here and move some other stuff down this way. We're not going to do that quite yet. So for this episode, let's really, now, now that I've reviewed the map again, which I love to do, let's go play any cards that we can. Um, you know, demonstrations, we've kind of given up on those. We could, we could play a few, you know, it doesn't hurt. I, I generally, when I play the game myself, I don't really use the demonstration cards. They cost some money. We already are a little short on money, but sure, let's cause the union a few heartaches. Uh, but developed territory, we always play. For $5,000 here, we can get five victory points, which is great. Now, we don't want to play at some place that's going to be taken um, because we'll kind of lose the card. You know, the Union takes it. We can only play this in our own uh, land, so any place where there's a Confederate flag. So we could play it at Staunton. What we're looking at is the loyalty. So loyalty, Confederate, 79%, Unionist, 21%, because this does give us some additional loyalty. Uh, let's move a little further west. Maybe we'll find some place out here interesting. Um, Dover, 85 and 15. Oh, I know one place where maybe it might make sense to play this. Let's look down here in Mobile. I know that there's always like real split loyalties. Yeah, it's 59 and 41. Oh, but yeah, of course we can't develop it. It's already developed. Uh, it's really strange. Mobile has some real split loyalties. Uh, 58 and 42 here in Corinth. Beautiful place to play it. Uh, let's do that. Uh, we could do some clearing. We could do some of this other stuff. Uh, you know, play around with these as you like. You know, if you want to spend some money or you think it might help you in a place, you know, build defensive works obviously might help. We did build that, I think, at Fredericksburg, didn't we? Yeah, we've built defensive works here, which would help his entrenchment value. He is a three, but I believe you can go to a four with defensive works. Um, so out here, really, once we move Floyd in this reserve group up here, there's not a whole lot to do. Otherwise, we've got this other reserve group here. Uh, we've got Fields Brigade going up there. I think one thing I will do is take the second reserve brigade and move them out here to... Let's go put them in Staunton. Now that's 24 days. Second volunteer. We've got these volunteers. I'm tempted to, you know, we can always recall these guys very quickly. They're on rail lines. Let's put this group out here at Petersburg, uh, and then we'll keep them with Bushrod Johnson. Now, does Vendor, Vendor has Huger Supply. The reason I was looking at that is uh, in this Richmond force, he's kind of got this supply wagon that's not doing a whole lot. So if there's some place it needs to be, but there's really not. Uh, we have, now remember, we have MJ Thompson He's now in charge of this stack. He's going to go hunt down these, uh, this Union. It looks like a cavalry, kind of a scout force. But they could go cut rail, and we cannot have this rail cut. They sort of slip by us here. Uh, a little upset at myself I let that happen. Um, but they did slip us slightly. So let's, ho let's hope we can stop them before any, any damage happens. We still have Zolikoffer out here. Uh, that's great. There's not much to be done here because... We cannot get up here into Kentucky. We still consider Kentucky neutral. We do have Union forces kind of streaming down the western side of the Mississippi. Uh, but this group is going to activate if they come anywhere near here. Um, if not, we'll have uh, our good man Leonidas Polk jump the river. We also are building a ton of stuff. Uh, hmm. Why don't we move these guys over here, and we will rail them. Two days, okay? That gives us a little force over there, just something. Um, it's better than nothing. Okay, uh, well, he still hasn't gotten his cohesion back. I really wish that would happen. Uh, nothing on the transport front. We don't need those really right now. 
not doing any amphibious invasions, as you might suspect. Now look at this. You know, Lions up to a 733 force. We are moving Mr. John J.O. Shelby. Uh, I moved him off here. Here we go. We're moving him over here five days just to kind of have a little blocking force. We've got him very soft defensively. Uh, we've got 419 under Ben McCullough. It will be interesting to see what happens there. Now we have this force out here. Now we're seeing a general and a cavalry regiment. Okay. Um, we have some Texas Rangers and a cavalry. Down here we have some militia. Move them out from the town so they don't get besieged. We also have this huge flotilla back here. I call them a flotilla, I don't know, amphibious force. It, you know, they've got more transports. Are, are they going to unload some more troops? I don't know. But we are going to build some things, just in case. Oh, look, we've got all these ironclads available. It was like 146 power. That looks fantastic. So I think Texas is considered the old southwest. Um, we don't want to spend an absolute ton in men or war supply out here. I mean, this is a fairly remote location. You know, uh, if they take Houston, it's not the end of our war effort. Uh, we've got Cavalry, Texas. We've got Rangers, Texas Rangers. Well, that sounds great. Let's build Let's build a Texas Ranger unit in Houston. Uh, these guys are 10 money, 5 conscripts. They build in a day. Uh, awesome. That's exactly out here. That's what you want. You want them on the cheap. Um, so we'll do that. I mean, we could build some Cavalry, but this builds us up enough that I'm hope. Oh, we also have some. Let's build a volunteer unit out here too. This is not costing us much. So, you know, sure. Let's put one here. And uh, if they get any ideas about San Antonio, where's Sibley? There he is. Uh, volunteer tech. Let's give him, you know, some volunteers. Okay. So that didn't cost us a ton, and we've got, uh, you know, a lot of things happening now in Texas to at least stave off anything that's not a big invasion. A big invasion force we're not going to be able to stop anyway, so we might as well kind of, you know, throw something. Oh, look at this. The Manassas is ready to go. We'll put that with the Mississippi squadron. Uh, the Mississippi's now building, but look at this, 132, right? So this gives them 170 power. We'll move them right back out here. Uh, we want the, it's hard, you got to make sure the, there we go, rivers lit up. We've got them offensive, offensive. It'd be nice if we had an admiral with that group. Uh, we still got these guys out here. No admiral. Um, they're just running the blockade. We don't have anyone there. Most of our admirals are over here to the east. We've got guys, we've got... Uh, Tatnall out here. He's kind of by himself. I mean, he must be running this brigade all the, or brigade blockade all the time. And then we have Semus here who has hit them a few times. So, okay. All right. So we've built up Texas a little bit. Uh, we've still got, you know, we can still build some more. Let's maybe put, hmm, we're just not in danger here yet. Now that can change very, very quickly. Um, I wouldn't mind building another unit here. Let's do all again. Now, with the all, we saw all of those huge... Uh... Oh, I would will mention, as the game goes on, you've kind of built a, t a bunch of your Virginia stuff. You'll start to see this. North Carolina now, Mississippi, can form bigger brigades. And so you will start to see these... Um, active. Now, one thing I'll also tell you we haven't talked about, this is showing ships. We're not interested in ships right now. Let's look at infantry units and see you can filter it over here on this side as well. So, we, gosh, we got these really nice Tennessee infantry units. We got a nice Arkansas one, which could be very helpful. Uh, you can start building them down in Alabama. 30, 14, and 45. 
conscripts supply. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, let's go over here and put these guys in mobile. Uh, we need that. That's good. Um, let's... I hate to build a really expensive force in Louisiana, but I think it's probably why. Now, remember, we still have these Virginia guys, and we're going to go build some more of those in a minute. Uh, we also have these Virginia forces. Hmm. Look at that nice Arkansas and Tennessee, though. What are we talking about here? 42 conscripts. Yeah, we could really only build a couple of these. Huh. Well, hmm. Deep South, is that Louisiana? No. Deep South, Southeast, that's obviously not Louisiana. Southwest, yeah. So see, you could do this really good infantry brigade here in, La in Louisiana, but gosh, I just feel like that's way too much to spend. Uh, but I don't want to really do any more volunteers. <sighs> decisions, decisions, what makes this game fun? Let's do uh, another volunteer actually in Baton Rouge. Uh, let's do some Arkansas volunteers. I really wear out the volunteers when I play out this game because they don't, just don't cost much and they get in the way of things uh, if you're worried about movement. So uh, volunteer Arkansas, we'll put one at Fort Smith. And what do we have here at Little Rock? Oh, we already have these guys. Okay, let's try another one. Put another one here. Okay. Now, just moving along, getting all the volunteers I can get. Um, now, let's think about Tennessee. Oh, sorry. Let's think about Tennessee again, which I guess is... Oh, there's Missouri ones, too. They're killing me. I love to build these things. Um, we can't do a lot in Missouri yet because we don't really control it. So, I mean, this is still Arkansas, right? So we don't, there's nothing, we can't really build in Missouri. That's considered the west. Then we have the far west. Southeast. I always hate this. I don't know why I can't figure out, you know, is tennis? <laughs> all right, let's go back to all. Let's look at these Tennessee guys. I think we need to build another one of them. Uh, maybe for Zolikoffer. Do we have the one that's one down? We do. Okay, let's give one of these guys to Zolikoffer. Let's give another one to Polk. And then let's go over to Virginia with whatever we've got left. I told you I was going to use the jump map. Uh, here we go. And let's just continue. We're always you've always got to be building up Virginia. Um one there. Okay, now we're locked out from that. And that's fine. Although I will say we're looking really good in war supply. Let's go look at okay, so wow, look at all of the forces we're building. Transport rail pool. We can do the rail pool again. That's 20 war supplies, 40. Ah, that's perfect. Um, oh, yeah, we can, uh, this is just kind of another option to increase your river pool, 25 and 50, let's do it. Anytime you can build these, like, you know, you, you're kind of like, well, I've got extra money or worse supply, uh, do it, do it whenever you can. It's always helpful. We can issue more war bonds. Now this is going to cost us 25 victory points, but that's okay. We're going to have to get money. So that's fine. Interior, we could build more of these, assuming one of them is cheap enough. Twenty-five and a hundred thousand dollars. Arsenals in Georgia, perfect. Okay, now we've really, you know, spent a lot of our stuff, uh, but things are uh, happening, and I think with that we'll end this turn. I think we've done everything we can. Let's look back. Let's see where we are in objectives here. Uh, we're at 1,053. 
the Union's at 876. We are ahead and picking up steam. They've lost 13,000 men, and we've taken 6,200 casualties. We obviously control the vast majority of objectives. Let's play this turn and see what happens. Now, I'm hoping these troops get up here to Stonewall before the Union tries to move on him. Because I think with those troops, we can stave off pretty much, you know, unless they start combining into huge armies up here, I think we can stave off what they've got uh, currently at Winchester just with those troops if we move them up. So, wonderful. Let's, let's hope that it's not, you know, the AI is not going to be that aggressive with us right off the right off the mark here but we shall see oh boy a lot of resolution going on there very curious to see what happens you see it's build it's figuring out supply it's okay now we're going to start jumping around the map and see what happens day by day uh the union was reinforcing there Again, across the river, across the Potomac, so that should be interesting. I'm hoping we get one big battle in here before everybody retreats back to winter quarters. Now, this game, um, in the winter, it's very hard to attack. In the winter, you get penalties. Um, and so there won't be a lot of action in the winter. Once things turn to ice, especially in the east, you really kind of can't do operations um, or large-scale operations. It doesn't mean you can't move troops around, you can't fight a battle or something. It does mean that it's very difficult to be the attacker in the winter. So it's something, as the Confederacy will definitely not do. If you like to play the Union, it's potentially something you might want to do. You know, it just kind of depends on how things are going, what your national morale is, are things, you know, are you getting a lot of pressure on the home front? All right, so you see here the Union moving swiftly down the western side of the Mississippi. And we did see a general portrait there which doesn't make me particularly happy because we're not not particularly well prepared for that. Let's put it this way. Yeah, they're eventually going to attack Beauregard there, I think, in Virginia before the, uh, before the winter sets in. So that'll be fun. But we should be in really, really good shape with him. Now they're reinforcing at Winchester, but I'm reinforcing Jackson. So hopefully we have done that in time. You know, this is one thing the AI does. It spreads out its forces a little too much, if you ask me. I mean, he's got three separate army groups there. They're probably really the size of cores. Oh, here comes more generals down the west side of the river. They figured out that we're on the east side, and we may have to jump over to the west side because here they come but they're all still you know they're kind of spread out they're not bunched so the ai will do that a lot they will kind of spread out their forces if you play a really good human player uh, that plays the union and knows how to play the union they're going going to come at you in force Yeah, you can see these turns, once the game has progressed quite a bit, um, really, you know, they take a long time to resolve. And the game system, I think, is really cool. I know I've beaten a dead horse with that, that uh, the Wego system is really cool, but I love it. I love watching these turns resolve themselves. I find that, I find it interesting and kind of, you know, you've got detection on this, so it's, you know, fog of war. We're playing with fog of war on, but these are all the things that we can see based on our spies, our spotters, uh, our cavalry, or just having, you know, troops in the area. Yep. 
Yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time on the naval. Oh, they're making a play for Tucson there. I haven't spent a lot of time on the naval because honestly, if you're playing the Confederacy, uh, the naval is just not hugely important. That doesn't mean you can't have some fun with the naval stuff. Run the blockade, you know, deal with uh, their shipping lanes and do some stuff. But honestly, for the Confederacy, the the whole war is on land. Everything that matters, you're blockaded, so not a whole lot you're going to do there. If you do like the naval part, and I I think that the naval has done really well in this game. It's abstracted, but I think it's done pretty well. If you do like that, you know, uh, certainly play the Union. Now, here's old shirts out here. We had no commanding general. Uh, looks like we more than held our own. And it looks like that might be the only battle this turn. Unless something... Oh, there you go. Old Ben McCullough. He's all, he, he's all dug in. And we shall see. Hopefully he doesn't retreat back into the fort. I'd really prefer that not happen. Well, we're going to get a battle on the last day. Now, as you see, we are dug in here. This kind of goes into what's the current turn, what are the phase, I guess you would call it. Uh, you see here, this is day 15 of the turn. That's what that means. Ah, nice. Confederate victory at the Battle of Fayetteville. 1861, early September, day 15. Now, interestingly, we lost a similar number of men we lost a ton more cavalry and we even lost a couple of guns they lost none but we inflicted more casualty and cohesion loss and we held on this was a very close battle obviously you know pyrrhic victory right it, it's very <laughs> It looks like we kind of lost the battle, but we were defending our home soil. We were dug in. We weren't going anywhere. And it looks like a lion decided to disengage first, giving us a nice little victory here. Now, we saved Shelby by moving him out earlier in the turn. Interestingly enough, that may really work to our advantage. We can bring him back now, so it's almost like we have reinforcements. The Union really doesn't. I mean, he's got this group over here, uh, but, you know, doesn't have really great reinforcements around the area. So let's see what messages we got. We see our battle here, and I think we're going to see our battle down in Texas with the general. <laughs> this guy cracks me up. General Shirts. Uh, they're besieging Indianola. Well, I'll tell you what, go for it. Um, there's not a whole lot we can do to stop that if that's what they want to do. Let's uh, look at our... Oh, what do we have here? Oh, okay, that's just showing us these guys are under siege. Uh, let's look at some of our scripted messages. It says, new diplomatic options are available, F6. Ah, now see, these are the ones we're not doing because we don't care about the Europeans entering, but this is the one I was talking about. Allow intervention in Kentucky. The regions of Kentucky, blah, 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 foreign entry is decreasing and national morale is affected. The government has decided to allow Confederate forces to go through Kentucky despite the state's neutrality. The measure enrages Kentuckians and strongly affects the nation as it is a violation of state sovereignty. Such a measure can only be taken once. It costs you three morale and 50 victory points. We're not going to do anything that costs 50 victory points. I mean, quite frankly, the Union's going to storm into Kentucky and it will open up the floodgates uh, very shortly anyway. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We uh, commissioned more stock on our railroads, uh, more river transports. We've decided to issue war bonds. You saw all of that. New arsenals in Georgia. Oh, okay. So we have some new generals. And we have, nice, A.S. Johnston has arrived from California. Now we have a three-star general, and we can truly form the Army of the West. And that's excellent. 
uh, and right on time. Now, these guys are only 77, so question whether we really... What do you got? Ulysses Sess... Yep, there's uh, old U.S. Grant. Excellent. Now, what I do when I play this game is I rail Leonidas Polk to Nashville, and I rail Albert S. Johnston to Memphis. Why do I do that? So Johnston's a 4-2-1. His seniority's a 3. He's a 3-star general. He has the special trait of being a surpriser, so he gets to uh, fire first for the most part. Um, Memphis is more important than Nashville, at least this early in the game. So I always switch these two because I would much rather Johnston be in charge down here at Memphis and take on Grant and hold on against Grant, plus he can command more forces, then I would like Polk to take him on. So I want to send Polk up uh, to Nashville way. So let's take Polk out of this stack. Let's move him. up here to Nashville. Let's do that by rail, since it really costs essentially nothing. That'll be seven days. And then we're going to take Johnston and move him down to Memphis. And I just think it is a better way to organize these two guys, because you need more against Grant up here or over here on the Mississippi. So it would take him 14 days. I want him to hear, be here in seven days. Might as well. When it's just a commander, it just, you know, doesn't matter if you put him on the rail. Uh, now we have Bragg and, he you know, Bragg's a special case. We'll go to Bragg here in a minute. Um, Earl Van Dorn in the house. Look at this guy. Uh, he's got a 25% move bonus in wild areas. That's cool. He's got Indian fighting skill. That's cool. His seniority is a four. Okay. So Van Dorn also was over in this theater historically. We've got Ben McCullough over here now, who is really, you know, McCullough is a four two two. Van Dorn is a 4-1-0. So McCullough is a much better general. So what I'm going to do, so we've got Van Dorn and Maury. Now we already had Maury here, I think, didn't we? Uh, oh, we've got Heinemann out here now too. He's an occupier and a patriot. Okay. Only applies if he's in command of his stack. Both of these. Um, interesting. Okay. And we've got William Hardy as well. So he's got his seniority seven. He's a pretty decent general, four three one, and he is a training master. That's fantastic. Hardy's going to come over here to Memphis, and we're going to train a ton of troops in Memphis. We've already got a bunch of training. This, if you read this about Heinemann or Hardy, excuse me, training master means he provides an experience point every turn for all the units in the stack he is in by drilling them. So we're going to get him right over here in 13 days. Wonderful. Can we send him? What happens if we try to send him by river? Uh, it's actually slower. By rail? Five days. Okay, cool. Um, we'll send him over by rail. And we are going to deal with Heinemann, Van Dorn, all of these different generals we have over here in the west next time. When we come back, now we're getting very close. When we pop over to October 1st, we are going to be able to form divisions, and that really, really helps as the Confederacy, believe me. So we will do that next time. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. I have a blast playing these games and telling you about them. I only play my favorite games, so... What could, uh, what could be go wrong with that, right? Um, if you did enjoy this, please feel free to hit subscribe. I would appreciate it. And for Strategy Gaming Dojo, I will join you next time. Goodbye.